International sprint car racing in places like Europe. The possibility was brought up this week by Kyle Larson. We'll talk about it, plus some late model news items and our first round of shop photos. Let's go. It's Tuesday, December 20th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Before we get into a bunch of good stuff today, uh, the show today is sponsored by MSP Mounts. If you tune in regularly, you've heard me talk before about these awesome action camera mounts. These were developed by sprint car racer Dan McCarron, and they are perfect for whatever you race. Indoor season is upon us, so if you're headed to Tulsa or racing your cart indoors in places like California or the Midwest, make sure to grab one or a few, a few of these for your GoPros or other camera setups. Flow Racing uses them, Swindell Speed Lab, Thomas Meserol, and they all like them because they are super solid, very adjustable, and easy to put on and take off your car. No tools needed. You could literally order one, take it out of the package, and be filming in minutes. They fit bars from three quarters of an inch thick to two inches and can capture any angle you can dream up. As part of his support of Dirt Tracker Daily, Dan is offering my viewers and listeners a nice discount on any orders. Money off is always good, especially in this day and age. When you check out over at mspmounts.com, make sure to use code Dirt Tracker for 10% off. That's D I R T R A C K R at checkout for 10% off at mspmounts.com. If you want to check out MSP Mounts on social media, make sure to find them on Facebook and Twitter at MSP Mounts. All right, just yesterday, the Loud, po uh, Loud Pedal podcast from Flow Racing released their 100th episode. Congrats to Tyler Burnett and Dylan Welch on that milestone. And I know they had done a bunch uh, previously as Rip the Fence as well with MRN. But they had Kyle Larson on as their guest, and I think this is the first time we've heard publicly from Kyle since the High Limit schedule was released. I wanted to react to a few things today on the show because there were some interesting tidbits in there. First, Dylan Welch will be the High Limit Series main announcer. He called the race at Lincoln Park back last summer, I believe along with Dustin Jarrett, and will continue those duties in 2023. They asked Larson about the changes to the Outlaw Platinum Agreement, and he was actually complimentary of the move, saying it was nice of Carter to allow some freedom and said it was a small step forward. I was actually a bit surprised by his positive comments on it. I kind of figured we'd get a similar line about it as we've gotten from some of the other drivers. Kyle obviously comes from a different place, though, as he's going to race where and when he wants anyway. He's not bound to any sort of schedule. He did say his plan is to run the full slate of 12 high limit races, which is what I expected. He did say his NASCAR commitments might change that a bit, but as of right now, he's going to run the whole thing. And they asked about Brad's sweet schedule also, and Kyle said that Brad is still weighing everything. Obviously not a surprise there. What I thought was super interesting, though, was their question about their future plans and hopes for high limit and the sport of sprint car racing and, uh, as a whole. And Larson mentioned seeing sprint cars race more internationally, and he specifically mentioned Europe. Outside of the U.S. and down under, sprint cars aren't a thing anywhere else. But there are actually dirt tracks in Europe. If you know about Tom Harris, uh, who we've seen run sprint cars and midgets here in the U.S., he runs F1 stock cars in the UK and places like Holland. They sort of look like a modified with a wing on top. So there are actually potentially venues that you could bring sprint cars to in Europe. It would obviously be a massive undertaking to get cars and equipment over there. But I like that they're thinking bitter, uh, bigger, even if it never happens. Some other interesting stuff from Larson were his thoughts about guys like Brent Marks and Anthony Macri, who made a bunch of money with pick and choose schedules. He said he'd like to see those guys full time with a big series because he wants the best to be competing against each other on a regular basis. Larson got into more detail also about his plans to now race the Chili Bowl. And he and Tyler hinted at an upcoming documentary series from Flow Racing that features Larson and his racing exploits. I had heard rumors that this was in the works. And I think this was maybe the first time we've heard it confirmed publicly. That will definitely be something to tune into when it debuts. If you want to watch the full episode of the Loud Pedal interview with Larson, it's available in the, uh, the shows section of Flow Racing. I'll also try and link to it in the video description below. Uh, and some dirt lay metal news from yesterday. Austin Kirkpatrick is teaming up with GR Smith and Team 22 for next season. He'll run a similar looking car to Peyton Freeman with the number two on the door. No mention of a schedule in the announcement, but uh, Kirkpatrick will be able to use the partnership to continue developing his own AK race cars chassis, and he will also be providing engineering support to Peyton Freeman's World of Outlaws rookie run. Also, if you are curious, here is Brandon Overton's paint scheme for the 2023 season. Uh, this showed up on the Wells Motorsports Facebook page yesterday. Definitely a bit of a different look with the addition of the red on the sides. Hat tip to Jack Kofer on Twitter for sharing this one. 
And word on the street, there might be some more big late model news later this afternoon. Should provide some interesting clarity for 2023. We'll definitely talk about it on the show tomorrow after it becomes public. Uh, one other note for you, Ross Weiss, who is my co-host on uh, who is my co-host on Open Red and video guy for World Racing Group, has been working on preserving Rick Eshelman's announcing note cards. He's got them all digitized, and if you want to check them out, head over to Weisespieces.com. W e c e s p i e c e s. Uh, the PDF he's created is massive, something like 237 pages of notes and information that Eshelman had compiled in his career. That's a neat uh, racing history project. Definitely something to check out if you're curious. Uh, I asked on the show yesterday for you guys to share some shop photos of your racing operations, and I've got a few to share actually already. We'll start first with late model racer Will Harrington's shop in Hawkinsville, Georgia. Uh, these are thanks to Chase Schaefer, who does marketing for JCM Motorsports. Uh, we saw Will a ton around the Southeast in 2022, and he made some uh, late season starts with the Flow Series at Sonoya. He was also at the Dome for the Gateway Dirt Nationals. Chase says their car will look pretty similar in 2023 with just that white deck change. Uh, they are planning to start the year with Speed Weeks in Georgia and Florida with Lucas and then figure out what to do from there. Uh, my next photo uh, is from the Max Blair shop and his new paint scheme getting ready for the World of Outlaws season, teaming up with Boom Briggs. Uh, this comes thanks to at Tucker Drums on Twitter, who is a sponsor of the team. A good looking wrap there for Blair in this new partnership. And I like his shop, uh, all the checks and trophies uh, kind of on the wall there. Uh, we'll see the Outlaws in action at Volusia here in almost exactly a month. And my last photos for today, Drake Hartzell uh, is from Illinois. This is kind of his setup. He races RC cars on dirt in the region and has spent time as a crew member for Billy Moyer Jr. And his dad, Jeff Hartzell, was a dirt late model racer as well. Love the shop photo, cars on stands, banners on the wall, tools, some WD-40 on the table. Uh, thanks to everybody who uh, contributed uh, photos here. And uh, if you would like to share yours, uh, you can certainly do that. You can DM me on social media or shoot me an email at info at dirt All right. Last night at the newly added Lincoln Speedway, the iRacing World of Outlaws were in uh, action for round number four. We again had some guys we normally see in features find themselves in B mains with guys like Brayden Eiler, Blake Majulis, Logan Rumsey, and others on the outside looking in after heat races. Things were actually pretty nasty early on. Definitely some dirty sliders that wiped some guys out. Uh, for the feature, it was Timothy Smith on the pole, and he looked like maybe he was going to run away with it. But inside 10 to go, we ended up with a three-car battle out front, with Kenny Miller eventually coming out on top. On the final lap, Smith got into the rear of points leader Alex Bergeron, also collecting James Edens, and three of the top four were completely wiped out. Miller drove on to the win, uh, which was his first ever with the series, and Kendall Tucker and Clayton Tilly stole podium finishes. Bergeron ended up 12th, Smith 13th, and Edens 14th. With Lincoln being so new, I thought maybe it could be an outlier on the schedule, and it definitely played out that way last night. Even with the trouble, though, Bergeron maintains the points lead headed to Peebly next Monday night. His 47-point lead is, uh, which was... His 47-point lead, which he had before, is now 31, excuse me, uh, with Tyler Shell moving up to second. You can tune into the iRacing World of Outlaws Sprint Cars Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern for free over on Dirt Vision and on YouTube. That's a quiet day on the streaming schedule. Just Flow Racing 24-7 and Dirt Vision now playing today. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Uh, that's it for the show today. Have a good Tuesday. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you don't do so already. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back here tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.